Start recording. Perfect. Okay. Um, so today we're kind of going to just go through Parent Square from the beginning to the end of it, uh, utilizing all the different pieces. And then if, as we go through, if you're like, oh, that applies to me more, we can talk a little bit about that and we'll do kind of a, a quick intro first uh, posts. Then we'll talk about messaging, uh, notifications for you and for students and parents groups, which for you are definitely going to be a lot more helpful, Jennifer, um, because you don't have students in Skyward. So groups are going to be kind of your thing. And then we'll talk about design blocks and those all of that stuff. So this is Parent Square. This is what Parent Square looks like uh, as a staff member once you log in on the website itself. Um, and Jennifer, you said you hadn't logged in yet, right? No, so I need to get with my admin to do that, correct? So I bet you're, we can see if you're in there because um, okay. then you can kind of follow along. And then if not, um, yes, you will need to get with your admin. But I bet, do you have Skyward access yet? Yes. So I bet you're in here. Right. So, um, yep, you're in here. So all oh, you good. need to do is I'll actually send you an email right now. Uh, but anyone who's never like who who's not in yet, you just go to parentsquare.com uh, and then you log in and you put in your email address and it will send you a link to log in and set up your password for the first time. Oh, awesome. And that'll get you all in um, as well. And Shelly, if you're in or not in or have questions, let me know as you go through as well. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, as we were trying to sign in one time during a faculty meeting. Um, I noticed that my home phone number was listed on there. Yes. And I couldn't, I stopped because that was the last thing I wanted available to students and parents. Yeah, so, so students and parents can't see it. Um, they, they can't access it. They can't, that information is basically, that's how it gets a hold of you. Um, and so you can change that information. It is, well, your school secretary can change that information. So what school are you at, Shelly? Hillcrest. Hillcrest. Okay, perfect. So yeah, if you go to your school admin and oh. in the Skyward staff table is where it lists that information. Um, but if you update it, that also updates where you're going to get any like emergency phone calls. It's the number that Skyward uses and it's the number Parent Square uses. You, no one will ever see that number, just you. Um, and me, I can see it because I'm the district admin, but I can also see it in Skyward if I wanted. But that that's how you could update that and you can change it. Okay, so if I just put my email, my school email in there, I will be okay. And that's all that parents will be able to see. Parents won't even see your email, technically. They, okay. they, they, the only thing they can see is your name and they can message you in Parent Square only. They can't send you messages or emails from Parent Square itself. So yeah, so yeah, you should be good to go and your school admin can take out that phone number if you'd like, but it's already hidden for everyone. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, great question. I think it's it's an important one, definitely, because it is a little jarring when you're like, wait, what am I sharing? I don't yeah. know. So, I, so I'm I glad can, you asked. So I missed that because I was trying to log in. So I can confirm it, but people won't see it, correct? Yeah, so basically you're just confirming it just like a parent would confirm it. So this is where okay. you want to get notifications uh, when they're sent out to you. Because not only do, do you, uh, you know, staff use it to communicate with parents, but it's also how the district communicates with, with employees. For wow. example, um, when we had power outages on Monday, we sent out a parent square phone call to employees to let them know that there was power outage at certain schools. Um, and so that's the number it will either text or call um, if there's some sort of emergency alert. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, but just like you'll never see parents' phone numbers and they'll never see yours. Okay. So it's similar to Remind in that way, if you've okay. had experience with that. So Yeah, a little bit. Okay, perfect. So the big things once you log in here on the left hand side are posts and messages. Those are the two most kind of valuable things that you're going to use. So we'll talk first about posts and then we'll talk about messages. So posts are things that go out to a large group of people. So if you are a staff member with, you know, Skyward students, a teacher, um, this will be how you send out a message to your entire class. Um, it's similar to, I like to tell people like a Facebook post where you don't get to choose what friends see it. It's all of your friends will see it. Similar to this way, you can choose um, what class 
sees it, but everyone in that class and all of their parents will see this post. Um, for you, um, Jennifer, you probably won't have many things because you don't have a Skyward class. So we'll talk more about how you're going to message out with groups. Okay. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that because you won't really have anything in posts to share it with. Uh, but if you are a teacher, you'd have, you know, your classes show up similar to this. Okay, why, when I went to my email, now all of a sudden I'm just seeing your pictures. I'm not seeing what you're looking at. How do I get back on that? Um, so it, you're probably, it's probably on a different screen. Are you on a Mac? Yes. Yeah, so um, try doing a five finger swipe up. Are you on a laptop or a desktop? A uh, laptop. Laptop, do a five finger a swipe up on your mouse pad and you might be able to see me there or do a swipe to the left or to the right and see if you can see it. Um, but try and find Zoom um, here and well, all. I can, yeah, I can see you, but okay. No, I don't know where you went. Oh, there you are. Okay. I just it. took it off and back on again so it would show up to your top. So there, we're good. Got it. Okay, thank so, you. So yeah, of course, I'm glad you asked. So you'll see your classes here if you're a teacher. If not, you will you probably won't see much here, um, but you can choose multiple classes to send a message to um, and it will send them all at the same time that you can choose those. Okay. And it's similar to anything else, you'll just put in a subject. Um, so, you know, I'm gonna say there's a test tomorrow um, and I can choose who sees this. At the secondary level, um, middle school and high school, students also have what's called a uh, student square account. So they get messages and alerts as well. So um, I always choose students at those levels. At the elementary level, students do not have accounts, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but you can choose staff, parents, or students. Um, Staff basically means it goes to you unless you're an admin or something at the school and it would, you can send out to multiple staff members. And then just similar to what you do with anything else, you just start typing um, a message in and you can copy and paste information here, whatever you'd like. You can add a picture um, if you would like as well. So you can add that and then you're good to go. What's cool about this is when you send a post out, um, it will send it out in the language that the families ask for. So it automatically will translate anything you put in here. It's obviously not going to translate a picture or a PDF, but it'll translate any text that you type in here um, automatically based on their preference. So we have 39 languages in the district that parents are currently speaking and, and requesting uh, communication in that language. So it's really nice in that way. Um, so that's how you add things in there. Um, and then another option you have if you want to make things even kind of more fun and exciting, if you click on this plus button here, there's a thing called design blocks. And what this lets you do is add things in so it looks kind of fancier. So you can add like a header in, you could add some text in, maybe you want two columns of text, and then you want some pictures. Um, and so it puts all that in for you. And then you just go in and replace the text with what you want it to say. So then you can end up with a kind of fancy looking um, newsletter or net message you're sending out to parents um, that will translate for them. So that's how you add text here. So now let's talk about how you actually send something out. Over here on the right hand side, you'll see notification options. Um, and what this lets you do, we'll zoom in here to this. Um, what this lets you do is choose how you want to post it. One of the things with Parent Square is it lets parents choose when they want to get messages. Some parents want them immediately. Some parents want them all at one time. So they have the option to choose an instant or a digest. Um, and so a digest comes at six o'clock at night. That's when the digest is sent out every night at six o'clock. And it takes everything from all of the schools that they, they have students in and puts it in one email for them that they can then go through and see all the posts. Oh. So you don't um, need to worry about sending things too frequently. Yeah. Is that correct? It's up to <laughs> because it's up to them to choose. So if they're getting it oh. too frequently, they can go in and choose digest instead. Um, and so you also want to think about that if you're sending out like, oh, tonight is our, you know, we're having an open house, a work-based learning open house type of a thing. I want to remind you about it. You're going to want to then choose send instantly, which overrides that digest because it's before 6 p.m. maybe, or you want to make sure that they see it um, immediately. But other than that, send it user preferred time is the most common thing and the best way to do that. Awesome. Okay.
You can also attach things like um, uh, photos, files, and there's some other options. As you kind of level up, you can request volunteers and cr create volunteer slots. You can also ask for items, kind of create a little wish list of things you'd like to be sent in. People can then sign up to, to bring that into the classroom um, and then it takes it off the list so multiple people don't bring in multiple things. Awesome. Once you're ready to post, you either click post now or if you click the arrow, you can click schedule. So you can actually schedule these ahead of time. If you're like, oh, I'm just gonna go through and schedule this one, this one, this one. Um, you can schedule it to be sent out and it will then automatically send out when uh, the time that you've chosen. Oh, cool. So it makes things a lot easier, um, kind of helps you prep as you're planning for all of those things. Okay, so that is a post. It's basically, it's pretty simple. It's just as easy as writing a Facebook post once you actually make the post, it's going to one, send an, a message out to parents. They'll either get an email, a text message, or they'll get an app notification. And parents can choose how they get notified as well. So maybe they don't want emails, they only want the app notification and they can choose that. Right. So it gives them that flexibility. And then once you send it out, it'll show up in their feed. So you can see here, this is the feed of Jordan High School. Um, and so that way they also have access to go back to it. Um, and so that they can look and be like, oh, what was that that was sent out? They don't have to search their email. It's all in this feed, okay? So that's posts. That's basically all you need to know about posts. It's very, very, very simple uh, and super easy. You said there was a way to put forms on there? Yeah, so you can have like a permission form and yeah. those types of things. So if you click into a new post, there's this forms feature that uh -huh. allow you to um, do a permission slip that they can then sign okay. um, virtually. So you, they, we have pre-made ones for a field trip, a media release, and for other types of forms. So if you're having a field trip, this would be the great one for that. And okay. then you, you answer some questions, you put in some information and it automatically puts in a form there. Well, and that's something if you're wanting to get set up more, I can help you with too, but what's okay. your question? I'll have to call you separately or something then too, because um, there's like, what is it called? The assumption of risk form that they yeah. use for driving themselves. It'd be good to have that yeah. on there and an activity form. Yeah, so that's something that we can work with. We work with each school and get uh, principal's permission. If they're okay doing it virtually, then we can set that up and get you going for it. So awesome. yeah, so let's talk about that for sure. Okay, thanks. Yeah, of course. Okay, so the next thing we'll talk about is messages. Messages differ from uh, posts because messages are basically how you communicate like a text message, one-on-one -on -one or one with a small group of people. So um, what it allows you to do is to basically send a text message to parents, uh, send a message, and you can send it up to 50 different people, um, but no more than 50. And so, for example, I'm actually gonna change schools real fast because I used my children as an example. So I'm not releasing oh, other idea. <laughs> information. I never like to put other people's info out there. So um, I use my kids. So I can send a message when I go in, it says, you know, recipients, <clears throat> choose your person. My daughter's name is Boston. So I start typing in Boston's name and you'll see what pops up is both of Boston's parents. And so I can see that this is the parent of Boston, who's my third grader. So that's correct. So I choose that person. I type in Boston again. You'll notice that Justin's no longer there, but Maria is. I choose that it puts Maria there. I type in Boston again, no matches found. That means I'm now contacting everyone that is involved with Boston. So I know kind of that I've got all the parents involved okay. that are there by typing in the student's name. I didn't need to know the parents' names. It doesn't matter because I can just do this and it tells me, right? I can do the same. So here, if I go in and I'm looking for a student, I type it in, I can see these are the parents of that student as well. So it tells me all of those things. Then I have an option between a private message or a group message. The private message um, is basically a one-on-one. -on -one. It sends a, a, a special text message just to this person and a text message to that person. Or I can do a group message, which sends one message to all of us and lets us all go back and forth. Mm -hmm. So these are really great uh, depending on what you're doing. So I've seen 
in the private message high schools, when they have attendance issues, they'll go in here, send a private message and list a bunch of kids information in there, send out a message to them. Uh, it sends a single message and says, hey, you have attendance issues, reach out, we need to talk, whatnot. Um, but others, maybe we're scheduling an IEP or you know, we have questions about that. We can do a group message and include parents, uh, maybe the principal that I want involved in this as well. So I've involved the principal as well. And I'm going to send a group message about scheduling an IEP or another meeting. And that way everyone can reply back. So that's super helpful. Um, one thing as a staff member that's important to note, and we'll talk about these a little bit later, uh, but you can set office hours in your settings to say, I'm available on these days from this time to this time. So parents know when to get a response from you. So they're not just messaging you and you're like, I only work on Tuesdays and you're not going to get a response. Um, you'll see I've set my office hours for 4 a.m. to 4.15 a.m. in the morning. So you can see it says here that Justin Anderson is outside office hours. So when anyone goes to send me a message is actually going to tell them, hey, he's actually not available. And if I go to send that message right now, it's actually even going to pop up and say, hey, they're out of office and they might not respond. Are you sure you want to send it? So this is really important. Uh, I tell all staff members to do this because it sets a really good expectation and a boundary with parents that, hey, I only respond during these times. So if you if you message me out of that time, I might not immediately respond. Um, and it just helps you understand that as well. So we'll talk about office hours more, but I just want you to know where that pops up. So then that is messages. Um, your messages will then show up. Let me go to them so you can see mine. Um, your messages will show up on the right hand side here and you'll see um, all the messages from the different teachers and then you'll see the message going on here, right? So a message from my son's band teacher that he hasn't turned in a form and another one, um, you know, just making sure, hey, he still hasn't turned in that form. Uh, one from principal saying, hey, your student has more than six absences. So you can see all of those show up here and it lets me... Um, kind of know what's going on and also shows auto office hours. So you can see um, Justin Pitcher, assistant principal, he has office hours set from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That's when he's available to respond to parent square messages. And so he's set that right now so I can see that. So that's how messages work. It's pretty nice, pretty um, easy to go through. Um, you can, you know, communicate out to parents. You can communicate to other staff members as well, all through here. And this translates as well. So um, when I, if I'm a Spanish speaker, I set Spanish as my language. When I see the message, it's in Spanish. I write a response in Spanish back to you and you will see it in English. So it helps that two-way communication go on with parents. Um, so you don't have to constantly ask and you know reach out to interpreters. It will do it all for you. That's awesome. So, yeah, so messages is really helpful in that way. So that is messages. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about um, kind of those, all those notification settings that I was talking about earlier. Uh, if you click on your name at the top right hand side and then click my account, you can then set your notification preferences. So you go down here to notification settings and it will let you choose and parents can do the same thing. So for each school that my students are involved in, I can choose how I want my email messages, my text messages and my app messages to come. And so then I can turn those like I've turned this, my emails onto a digest and but I'm getting instant app notifications because that's easier for me. I'd rather see it in the app, uh, but I've gotten I get no text messages. I don't want text messages. That's just too cluttery for me. And so I get to choose this, which is really helpful. Um, and parents can choose this as well as faculty members. So anyone can do this as well. This is also where you'll set your office hours over here on the right hand, the left hand side, you'll see office hours. It lets you choose uh, what time and what days you're available so that they'll see that message. This is where you set that for yourself, okay? So that's important as you get set up and get ready to go, how you do things. So now we're gonna talk about groups. So, uh, Parent Square only basically works the same as Skyward. If they're enrolled in your class in Skyward, you can have access to them. If you're not enrolled, if they're not enrolled in your class, you don't have access to them. And how you do get access to them is by creating a group. 
So um, you in here, you can create a group and you can um, choose two different options, a static group or an auto update group. Um, if you're choosing specific groups of students, let's say it's math club uh, that meets after school, you would choose a static group because you know who those students are. Um, if you're choosing, let's say, all the eighth graders in the school, you'll want to choose an auto update group because then as a new eighth grader comes in, they'll automatically be added to that group. Um, and then you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to do a new static group and I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to create my test group name. Then the first thing it asks me is, is it public, private, or confidential? So public means anyone can join this group. You don't have to invite them. You don't want that. Don't do that. It's never helpful. Um, it just gets confusing. Private means only the people in the group can see the group and can um, see the messages in the group, and they can see that they're in a group and what it's called. Okay. Confidential makes that private group, but hides the name of the group um, when other people are in there and when they see it so that they can't, um, so people don't see what that group is called. So maybe this group is called math third grade pullout and uh, special ed pullout. I don't want everyone to know that the, that the students in this group are a special ed group. So it's actually gonna just hide that and just say group. I will see it on my side that that's what it's called, but the people involved in it are not gonna see that. And so that's helpful as well um, if you're looking for those confidential pieces, but private is usually the best option for everyone. Then you have advanced options. The first one is allow group members to post in this group. I do not recommend this. What this allows people to do is basically go back and forth. Anyone can comment. Anyone can reply to that. I'm not about the free exchange of ideas in a virtual forum. So I, I don't want that. Um, this Most of our groups are you know communication out tools. And so you want to remain that way. So I keep that checked off. I also hide directory is default to be hidden. Um, that way, not everyone see who, sees who's in that group. It just makes it easier. I always hide the directory and then make comments public, turning that off as well. There's no reason that these comments need to be public. If for some reason you have a, re a reason, okay, go right ahead. But we found in most of our groups, it's easier to do this. Um, some groups like having messages on. So right now I know some of our football teams are using this and they're allowing group members to post because uh, they're kind of going back and forth about, hey, don't forget rehearse. We have, you have practice, hey, bring this. Oh, hey, where, when can I get this? They're asking questions, uh, but it's not every group. The play, um, I know a couple of the school plays are using this. They're not having members post. They're just putting out information. Hey, rehearsals today, lunch is provided and, and just kind of putting that information out. Then as we go down, you can choose owners. So you can add other staff members as an owner to the group um, and other people who maybe aren't in the district. We'll talk about how to do that as well. And then you choose your students. And so you can first do it by searching their name and just adding them um, them, your, themselves. So you type in their name and you add the student. When you add a student, it automatically adds their parents. So you don't also have to go back and add parents. You only have to add the student and you're good to go. So you can see here, I'm adding Haley Anderson, my son, and it will add me and their mom. And so that's really nice. You just need to know your students' names. Okay. You can also add guest members, people who are not in Parent Square. So let's say you work with an outside entity that comes in and teaches a group for you, or you work with um, outside businesses who are going to be hosting these students. You can add them. They'll get an invite to Parent Square, and they'll be able to see this group and see the information that's posted in there. That's been really helpful for some of our plays that are have outside choreographers and things like that. So you can add a guest member. And then lastly, you can add with a CSV file. So if you do have a list of all of your students that you need in a group uh, with you know, their name and their student number, you can actually upload it so you don't have to type in all their names individually. You'll just click save, it makes that group for you, and then you end up with a group. Um, pretty simple and easy. It looks just like everything else. You have posts that you can post out. Parents you know, can look at those things and everything is hit kept in that one group. And that's how you communicate with people you are not in charge of in Skyward. 
Now, um, Jennifer, it's an extra permission we have to add. So you probably don't see the, the add button when you go to groups. Do you see the new group button? Let's see. I haven't gone on mine. I was just looking at yours. So no, no, you're good. You're good. I don't want you to lose us either. But I think it's an extra permission that we'll have to add on to for you. So that's something we can do before we end up today. Well, it looks like I still. Oh, I'll just confirm. It wants oh, yeah. me to like confirm all these other accounts and stuff. Is there any way to bypass that right now? Or no. So you'll you'll need to either go through that and so we can we can look at it later for sure. Okay, because I have to go through each email and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yep. And there's so, my husband's on there and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. It, it, it asked, connects. It asked me if I wanted to combine accounts because I have a, you know, I have this district one and then my personal one. Yeah. So I recommend combining your personal and your work one. I It doesn't overlap anything. It doesn't, you know, give students extra access to you okay. or you. Ex it, it's helpful, but don't combine with another human being. So a lot of our parents have combined their like the husband and wife into one account. Yeah. And what that does is parent square doesn't want to then overwhelm that person. So they're only going to send emails to one email address in that combined account. So now the dad doesn't get emails or the mom is not getting emails. So only do that if, um, if it's the same person. So for you, ex for example, the parent and the, the staff member, those can be combined. Mine yeah. are combined. Um, you'll see I have my students who show up on the left-hand side, um, and then you see everything else, right? So mine are combined, and it works out really well. Right. So, yeah, because when we first signed up, we were unsure of what it all was. So my husband's on there, too. So I've got to figure out a way to get him off of there before That's I come off. Yeah. So if, if it's there, yeah, let me know. I can oh. break you apart and then make it happen. So... Okay. Let me add that to my list of people. So that that's me who does that. So yeah, so take my husband um, off. So, <laughs> yeah. So once once we're done here, stay okay. on. And um, once I'm done kind of recording, we'll go through and, and do your husbands and whatnot. Perfect. And that way you're good to go. So the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about, um, well, one was just to answer questions. If you had any questions um specific to parent square with you or your school, um, how things are happening. But the last thing is just to show you where you can get more information. So now, we have created now I gotta figure out how to <laughs> how to get back for here, whatever me... reason. Oh, wait. I'll stop and come back again. That way. Where did it go? It, I'll make it pop up to the front. There you go. Oh, there you are. Okay. No, I, I made it pop yeah. up to the top. <laughs> Thank you. So we've created a website. It's canyonsdistrict.org forward slash parent square. Okay. Um, and this is a, a resource for not only for staff members, but for parents as well. Anyone can go here. We put information here all the time. There's lots of resources. I just put it in the chat as well. Um, but there's information on parents, how to set up their accounts, how to download, all of that stuff. And then there's resources for parents down here and for staff members. So this, how do I up, update the staff table? This is what, um, for Shelly, this is what your school secretary needs to do uh, to update your phone number. The information on how to do it is right there for, for your school secretary. Um, adding a second teacher to a class, for example, our DLI schools, uh, classes that have co-teachers, it teaches you how to do that. And then there's printable resources that, that if maybe you want to send something home, uh, you know, so put something, there's a bunch of information here as well. So that's canyonsdistrict.org forward slash parents square, and that's going to be your best resource. Okay, cool. So that is everything. If anyone has any questions, um, you know, Jennifer, stay on and I will work on that uh, for you. But um, thank you for being here. There is, I do want to go through this because this is important. Um, you do have the ability to get relicensure credit for this um, for attending today. I'm going to put the link to the uh, form in the chat. If you'd like to get that relicensure credit uh, for attending today, you can get 0.5 relicensure, which is always nice just to kind of start accruing as you move forward. So uh, that's the link for that. And then if you have any other questions, everything is on the bite size PD page um, that you can get more information about this and many others. So I am going to stop the recording.